All right, in this first example, I have a set of numbers, 32, 18, and 42. And again, I'm trying to find the greatest common factor of those three numbers. Now, what you should know is that's the largest number that divides evenly into those three. What's the biggest number that goes into them? Very key um, skill to know when you are working with fractions and some other types of uh, math problems coming up in your algebra class. So, what I do is I make a list of the factors of 32. What goes into 32? Now, I'm going to do it in pairs. I notice that 1 times 32 gives me 32. And then I just kind of try out a bunch of other numbers. 2, does 2 go into 32? Yes, 16 times. 2 times 16. How about 3? Nope. How about 4? Yes. 4 times what? 8. All right, now is there anything between 4 and 8 that does go into 32? How about 5? How about 6? How about 7? Nope, that's it. Now on this first example, I'll just take a little bit of time here and show you the rainbow method. And basically what I'm going to do is connect all the pairs of factors that gave me my number 32. Notice how it makes a rainbow if we do it in the right order. Now we can actually write them out of order, but this is the best way to kind of keep track of what we're doing. Now I go down to the next number, which is 18. Now I'm pretty sure 18 has fewer factors, so let's try it out. 1 times 18, 2 times, yep, that's right, 9. And how about 3 times 6? And that turns out to be my entire list right there. 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 18. And then we look at 42. 1 times 42, yep, that's right. 1 is always a factor of a number and the number is a factor of itself. Two times, I want you to try to think one step ahead of me, two times what? Yep, two times 21. All right, believe it or not, three does go into it and in a different video I can kind of show you a trick for that. But three times what? 14. And if you're not sure, you can always do a little multiplication or division problem off to the side and figure it out. Turns out that 14 times three does give you 42. Yep. Just to check yourself there. How about 4? Nope. How about 5? How about 6? Yes. 6 times 7. Now I kind of guessed at my spacing but it happened to work out. And so the next thing I need to do is I need to figure out if there are some common factors here. Okay. Now this is a vertical process. Meaning that up and down I'm going to circle any common numbers and they have to be in all three lists. So 1 divides evenly into all three of those numbers and so does 2. Now 3 is in these two but not on the top. How about 4's? 6's? 7's? 9's? Nope, that's it. So in this example, the greatest common factor, the largest number that divides evenly into 32, 18, and 42 is 2. Believe it or not, that's the largest one. All right, now hit pause on this video and make your factor lists and look for the largest common factor. All right, I hope you tried this example. Um, here are my factor lists for 30. It's 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 10, 15, 30. Again, I could pair them up first to last and so on and make a rainbow, but you should be able to visually check that. You notice that 75, I've made a mistake here. Um, it's only a mistake in order, but I still have all the factors. 1, 3, 5, 15, 25, 75. 45, of course, is 1, 3, 5, 9, 15, 45. Did you remember the 3 times 15? All right. Now I'm going to take my red pen here and circle all the common factors. That's right. 1 is always a common factor for all of these. I notice there's a 3 in each list. Again, we're doing it vertically. Uh, there's also some 5's. And when, anything else? No. Now, my greatest common factor, in this case, it's going to be more than one number, but I need to multiply those together. The greatest common factor is a set of 3's and a set of 5's, which of course, when I multiply, gives me my real answer. 15. Remember, it's the largest number that goes into all three that I'm looking at. All right, take a look at my other videos for greatest common factor. There's another method to talk about, and also we can use it with algebra expressions. Thank you.